The first title is Passage. This title refers both to the passage of time and to the passing on of a soul into the afterlife at the body's death. In ancient Egyptian metaphysics, they explained the god of the passage of time as Thoth, a magician, and the god of death they called Osiris, a king. According to the Egyptian mythology, Set, the god of the serpentine Nile, betrayed and murdered King Osiris. Thoth then raised him back to life, incarnating him as Horus, the crowned and conquering prince of the winds, a hawk. The serpent of Set, the Nile, was then slain by Horus, but Horus lost an eye in the battle. The revenge of Horus upon Set is usually portrayed as a cat killing a snake with a knife. The cat refers to the Sphinx, which in turn represents the dog star, Sirius, that follows the constellation Orion, which represented Osiris. Just as is Sirius to Orion, so too is the Sphinx to the pyramids, aligned to mirror the belt stars of the constellation Orion. The air shafts, leading from the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid of Cheops, have also been found to have significance to astral alignments. There are also clear parallels between the Egyptian Prince Horus and the elder Norse god Odin. The Yggdrasil tree, from which Odin was hung by the feet to perceive the alphabet of runes, in the reflection of the moon in a rippling pond below, bears direct reference to the Kabbalist's Tree of Life Tesseract. That is also why the Hanged Man Tarot Trump is suspended from a branch shaped like the Hebrew letter Tau, or T. Tau is also the final letter in Hebrew equivalent to Omega in Greek. Following all these sorts of connections between archaeology and astronomy, languages and legends, is called doing Kabbalah, because this is how one meditates upon the Tree of Life, and thus, by doing so, aligns the chakras and cleanses the aura which, over time, brings forth the continuously flowing magic memory, and from the application of such historical learning, to transcend in the soul this mortal world while still alive. Therefore, come to understand all things relative to the original perfect periodicity that underlies all apparently random chaos in digital reality. The signs that come then will have deeper meaning and lead one true and right. You must always remember to avoid idle folly, for death is the universal jest, and all change, only an optical illusion. The second title is T-C-H-T-W-S-S-T-K-S. The secret meaning of this anagram is Tubal Cain, Hiram Tyrion, Widow's Son, Sendeth to 
King Solomon. The latter was inscribed around the capstone of the royal arch above the eastern entrance to Solomon's inner temple. The former refers to an ancient metalsmith contemporary to Enoch. Tubal Cain was a son of Cain's descent, and Enoch of the descent of crossing between Seth and Cain. Tubal Cain would have been an alchemist, for as such was the science of metallurgy known in the time of Enoch. Tubal Cain, therefore, would have known the seven metals that correspond to the seven days Sephiroth, colors, planets, and chakras, as well as to the seven Kamiya number squares of the true rows of phi over pi, the seven chief executives of the Senate, and the seven bankers of the order of death. As a master of Atlantean alchemy, Tubal Cain would also have known of the three dimensions represented by the three combined and three pure spiritual elements. He would have had a full understanding of the Tree of Life because it was still visible in Eden to the west of the city of Enoch. The way back to it, barred by an angel with a flaming sword. So he would have known also of Yetzirah as the bond between Bariah above and Asiah below, and so rightly understood the seven as inferior to the three. But because Tubal Cain was evil, he did not understand the nature of the supernal three, and that is why, while constructing Enoch's nine-chamber-deep tomb buried in a secret place, to house also the twin stones of Orichalcum containing all universal knowledge, Tubal Cain conspired with his brothers Javel and Jubal to slay Enoch and to carry off the twin pillars. Because he was murdered in secret, Enoch was said to have been translated to the archangel Metatron. The evil in Tubal Cain's heart prevented him from seeing the truth of the three supernal Sephiroth, and thus of the three worlds greater than Asaya. He could not see that Binah is Ein Sof Or, Chakma is Ein Sof, and that Kether is Ain. That is why Tubal Cain killed Enoch, and why Shekinah, crying for the deaths of holy men as a result of the fall of her firstborn, the Demiurge, caused the flood of all her tears. The third title is Atzaluth. Atzaluth is the highest of the four worlds of Kabbalah. Atzaluth is divided into three gradated umbrae of fluorescence, brighter below and darker beyond. This is because Ayin, the highest realm of the four worlds of Kabbalah, is equivalent to the nothingness that preceded the beginning of creation, the divine word. This nothingness is not greater than God, but it is superior all around his creation. The clear light of Ayin Sof Or, called understanding, is the superluminal radiation of micro-wavelength tachyons 
emanating around the singularity of our local universe, the multiverse of baby universes, and forms a nulliverse of pure energy. Beyond this is the parent black hole containing our singularity. Just as our universe's multiverse of baby universes comprises the tachyon aura of wormholes surrounding our navel singularity, so too does the very deep darkness of our parent black hole's uterine womb of nothingness surround even the outermost halo of this clear light. One has to undergo very many death-simulating rituals to achieve Ein Sof Or, but must be in a state of near-total ego transcendence, perpetually near death, to even fathom Ein Sof, the limitless nothingness. Beyond lies Ein, the nothingness that is not, and surely unfathomable blandness. Adzaluth is the combination of Ayin, Ayin Sof, and Ayin Sof Or, as like three Sephirot on the tree of life of Yetzirah. Bina, understanding, Chakma, wisdom, and Kether, crown. The interior kundalini spiral of the seven present chakras is, as we have said, like phi, while the exterior aura of the karmic cliffoth of chi energy, like pi, can only be described to the quarriers as the circle of the zodiac. The fourth title is Conception. The highest form of Kabbalah, the most high tree of life, is the tesseract that measures the difference between the primary clear light of Ein Sof Or and the absolute nothingness of Ein. This tesseract is inside of the realm of Ein Sof, in the world of Adzaluth, but it is not the entire realm itself. This tesseract, measuring change in the world of Adzaluth, the highest of the Kabbalist's four worlds, is named Tao Sub Tao, meaning the end of the end. Omega of Omega, and pronounced Te Hu Te He or Thoth. If we consider this highest tesseract of time as the archetypal Thoth, then we can also see that the realm whose changes or passages it measures, the realm of Ein Sof in Atzaluth, or of the difference between the clear light of our tachyon wormhole multiverse of baby universes, and the utter non-existing nothingness that is beyond this, would be like Osiris, then, for just as Thoth, the tesseract tree of life, is like a simple square to the quarriers. So too is Osiris, alike the Taurus depicted to the quarriers as the circle of the zodiac around the seven planets or chakras. Therefore, just as the tesseract of Thoth measures time as change between the differences of light and nothingness. So does Osiris, Lord of the Dead, embody the realm where this difference is made manifest, 
the shape of the torus of 12 around 7. Thus, yet Syra, the tree of life between Asaya and Bariah, or between Bariah and Atsaluth, is below what Ein Sof, between light and nothing, is above. For though Bariah is the long-lost pre-diluvial paradise of Eden, and the kingdom of heaven on earth, it is still only the lowest of all the kingdoms in the higher realms of heaven. There is yet much to learn. The fifth title is Fire. Because yet Syra, the tree of life tesseract, between Asaya and Bariah, after the fall, is below, identical to the Tau sub Dao tesseract, in Ein Sof of Atsaluth above, we say the Tree of Life is the hypercube of Thoth. Because the multiverse of tachyonic wormholes between baby universes surrounds the local universe, we call it the external hypersphere of which the torus of our individual soul is the inner sphere, and this relationship we say is like Osiris. Just as the Tau sub Dao tesseract measures the change over time of the multiverse, so does the Tree of Life model the digital reality of our aura and seven present chakras. Just as the Tree of Life Tesseract is an exterior model on which to meditate to visualize the true, invisible chi of karma in our aura and thus align our chakras, we explain the Tree of Life tool to the warriors as a square and the true work of the perfection of the soul as a circle. The square and compass thus symbolize karma, yoga, the labor union of sabbat when work is complete. Now at this presently perceived place and time, all cycles appear aperiodic relative to one another. However, at the exact moment of creation's beginning, all the cycles of all space-time were perfectly periodic relative to one another. Therefore, we consider the relative alignments between aperiodic cycles as points or corners along the timelines or edges of temporal patterns, the shapes of four space. We thus compare the seemingly random alignments in space now to the conditions of constant harmony at the first moment of creation. This is how to meditate on the tree of life. Study the alignments that occur apparently at random in nature, such as the seven planets aligning between the twelve signs of the zodiac, in order to understand the seemingly chaotic consciousness of the uncentered self-perspective, thus aligning the seven chakras and transcending to the three higher worlds in perception. That is why Kundalini rises like fire and descends like water. Why there is a pan of merit and a pan of liability. And that is why we call studying Kabbalah running and returning. Spiritual fire is the clear light of tachyons. 
the karma of our aura. When the pure chi is free from the cliffoth that contain it, and the supernal halo of the nulliverse around the multiverse around the universe. The sixth title is 22. As three symbolizes the three dimensions of Asaya, as seven symbolizes the interior spiral, and twelve symbolizes the exterior aura. So does 22 symbolize the combination in alignment, involution, and infinite extension of all these elements in one. As 7 signifies the square, 12 the circle, and three, karma yoga, or their working union as a square circle. So is 22, symbolic of the great work of the grand architect, complete. Therefore, the Tao Sub Tao Tesseract, or perfect ashlar, measures the moment of creation's beginning the first Planck time of perfectly periodic cycles, as at Saluth, while the Tree of Life Tesseract of Yetzira measures the difference at C, the speed of light, between the outer tachyonic light of the multiverse, Baraya, and the inner space-time continuum of our local universe, Asaya. As spiritual air moves through the tree of life, so is Tao Sub Tao, the tesseract of Thoth, within the realm of Absolute, spiritual fire, between the light of Ion Sof Or and the nothingness of Ayin beyond. Three measures the triple spectrum of light, twilight and darkness above in Atsaluth. As much as three measures the triple dimensions of space below in Atsaya. Between these, the seven align with the twelve to measure time as the exchange of energy. Thus, in 22, there are only either the three above or the three below, but the seven and twelve are between these, transforming one to the other. That is why the three are called mothers, because they are at the beginning, middle, and end of the sequence of letter vibrations. The first word, the universe. So, three equals the three dimensions of Asaya and the three supernal emanations of Ayn, Ayn Sof, and Ayn Sof Or, but also three equals the three worlds of Baraya, Yetzira, and Adzaluth, between Asaya below and Ayn Sof Or of Adzaluth above. So the three are supernal, but altogether there are four. The relationships between three and four are symbolized by the seven lower sephirot of Yetzirah and the twelve representing upper Bariah. Three plus four equals seven, 
and 3 times 4 equals 12. As 7 and 12 change places by involution over time, the 3 above move through the 4th below over time. And such are the chakras and the aura of the soul, an internal hologram of the multiverse of time tunnel realities. These are all depicted as the circle of Osiris, but the same measurements can all be made using the square of Thoth. This concludes the knowledge lecture of the titles of 2C degree Great Works Architect.